Hello and welcome. I am so excited because today we are going to talk about something that can literally change your life. And I'm not just talking about one tiny little area of your life that doesn't really matter in the long run. What we are talking about today can have a huge impact on any part of your life that you would like it to. Now I know this may sound crazy, but I can personally vouch for it because it has worked over and over again in my own life. So how are we going to go about bringing all of this positive change into our lives? Well, it's through goal setting. Now I know goal setting may sound like something you've already tried and it hasn't worked for you. And it might even sound a little New Year's resolution-esque, but stick with me because I used to create those New Year's resolution goals that most people do this time of year. And for me, they usually died off somewhere between January and February. But once I discovered this new type of goal setting that helped me create positive habits and helped me bring my dreams into reality, I never went back again and I continued to use this system every single year. So first we are going to look at what goal setting is, then we are going to look at why it works. Then I'm going to show you how to set effective goals for yourself and your family. Then I'm going to show you what my goals are for this year, both personally and professionally. And lastly, I'm going to show you some goals that I have set and accomplished that have had the biggest positive impact on my life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, please subscribe down below and ring the bell next to it so you can be notified when the next video comes out. All right, let's get into the video. So the way that I set goals is to take one specific goal and I work on that goal for a specific amount of time. Now you may think that doesn't sound any different than a new year's resolution, but the big difference between the way I set goals and the way I used to do new year's resolutions is in the amount of time I give myself. So instead of giving myself a goal for an entire year or a whole list of goals for an entire year, I will give myself one goal for one month. I started doing this type of goal setting years ago when a friend called me up out of the blue and said that instead of doing New Year's resolutions this year, she was going to set up 12 different challenges for herself, one for each month of the year. And she knew that I kind of liked doing New Year's resolutions and she asked if I wanted to do it with her. She said we didn't have to do the exact same ones, but we would just keep each other accountable for whichever goals we decided to do and I immediately fell in love with this more manageable type of goal setting because I was able to complete every single challenge that I set for myself. Whereas before, like I said with the New Year's resolutions, I would typically fall off the wagon pretty quickly. And I think the big difference is because instead of trying to juggle so many things mentally and trying to keep up with so many different resolutions for such a long period of time, I am giving my brain one thing to focus on for an amount of time that feels really doable. I mean, you can do anything for one month, right? Even something that feels really hard. Another reason I like the one month timeline, in addition to it being very manageable, is it also takes an average of 66 days to create a new habit. So if you can do something for one month, you are already halfway to creating a new positive habit in your life. So typically my goal with the challenges or goals that I set for myself is to create a new habit with it. For example, one of my goals for this year is to drink more water. And I have been working on that all through January. Now I've only been doing it for about 30 days at this point, but my goal is to carry it through to the next month and the next month after that. And once you have one month of doing something underneath your belt, whether that's working out or drinking more water or eating healthfully, it's much easier to continue doing that even if you continue to add more habits. So let's talk about how you can choose some effective goals to have for yourself. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure this is something you actually want to do. If you're just doing it because you feel like you should, you're not going to have that much motivation and it's not going to last the full 30 days. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to choose goals that are easy for you. I'm just suggesting that you are highly motivated for each of the goals that you set. Another thing you want to do as you choose your goals is you want to make sure the goals are actually doable within the time frame that you have set. For example, if you want to do something like pay off your debt, 30 days is not doable for most people, but you can cut up that huge goal into smaller chunks that you would be able to tackle within the 30 days. 
And if you really want to stick with your goals, find an accountability buddy. The first year that I did this, my friend and I would text each other pretty much every week and see how we were doing. That made us so much more motivated to stick with all of our goals than we would have been if we had been doing it on our own. Now, I've been doing it for so many years at this point that it isn't hard for me to stick with it, but especially that first year or the first few months, it can be incredibly helpful to just have somebody else that you can check in with and see how they're doing and to tell them how you are doing yourself. Now, I wanted to tell you about some of the goals that I have for this year to give you ideas of things that you may want to add to your list. Obviously, not all of these things will apply to all of you, but it's just some ideas for different types of goals that you can set. And I want you to notice too how some of these goals are larger and some are pretty small. So it really doesn't matter how big or small your goal is, as long as it's making your life better in some way or another. So I'm going to start off with my personal goals for this year. My first goal is to drink more water. I have this weird problem every time I have a baby that water doesn't taste very good to me afterwards and I have a really hard time drinking enough, which is weird because you should be needing the most amount of water in your entire life when you are nursing a baby. But for some reason, my body is just weird with all of that and I always have to conscientiously learn to drink water again once I am done breastfeeding a baby. The next thing on my list of personal goals is to get back into shape. After I have a baby, my body just likes to hold on to a little bit extra until I'm done breastfeeding, which is super annoying, but it is what it is and I'm used to it at this point. And I also can't work out while I am nursing, otherwise my milk supply drops dramatically. So now that the little guy is weaned, I'm very excited to get back into working out. Now, obviously getting back into shape won't take place in one month, but I can divide up that goal into months like I was talking about. So one month, I will have the goal of working out every day. Another month, I may choose the goal of eating smaller portion sizes. And there are a lot of other ways too that I can make getting into shape into smaller manageable goals that I can handle one month at a time. Another personal goal that we have for this year is to build a house and move to a smaller town. Now, obviously that is not going to take place in one month, but what we have been doing is cutting up that giant project into smaller manageable chunks so that we can make sure we are moving forward and getting things done when we need to. And the last goal I feel like is going against a lot of the things that I've already told you in this video, but I'll be honest and tell you what it is anyway. My goal is to go from January 1st of this year until December 31st without eating any processed sugar. So what that means for me is I will only use honey and dates to sweeten my foods this year. Now this probably seems like an absolutely crazy goal, especially since I said don't do anything more than 30 days, but this is not a new goal for me. This is actually how I typically live my life. However, when I was pregnant and when I was breastfeeding, I definitely ate more processed sugar than I typically do. And again, I'm at the point where I feel like I am ready to get back into shape, get back to living my normal healthy lifestyle. So this isn't a huge shift for me. It is just a matter of holding myself accountable for this entire year. When I initially started doing no sugar, I did do it just for the 30 days. And then that helped me create the positive habits that I wanted to have to make this part of my lifestyle. So let's move on to the professional goals that I have for myself this year. The first one is to get this channel to 10,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. It really helps out the channel and enables me to continue making this content. The second professional goal that I have is to have a small team working with me. And this is something that I have already started working on. And it's just so exciting to have people that can really help me take the content that I produce to the next level. The next professional goal I have for myself this year is to streamline the processes within my business. You guys know that I am all about putting your home on autopilot and just simplifying your life. And I love doing that too, 
but when I have been doing everything by myself the last couple of years, there's just way too many things going on to try to keep all of that organized. So now that I'm able to offload some of the workload, I am hoping to have everything running more smoothly and to be able to deliver the content in a more timely manner and just have everything running like clockwork. Along with that goal for myself, my fourth professional goal this year is to create a better weekly work routine. So I just wanna be able to wake up in the morning knowing exactly what I need to do for work that day instead of wasting time trying to figure that out every week. And the last goal that I have for myself this year is to create a membership site. The idea behind the membership site is that more people can have access to the information that is in the courses and that anyone who wants to can streamline their home. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the goals that have made the biggest impact in my life. I wanted to share this with you so that you can see if some of these goals might be things that you want to implement in your life. And if you do, don't feel like you have to do any of these things in a short amount of time. Instead, look at the size of the goal and look at how much work you would have to do to accomplish it and cut it up into nice manageable pieces that you can accomplish bit by bit. Now the order that I am putting this list in is not in order of importance or how long each one will take. Instead, it is just the order that I happen to tackle each of these goals in. The first big goal that we accomplished was paying off our debt. I knew that if we had kids someday, I wanted to be able to stay at home with them, but there was no way we could accomplish this while we had all of our student loan debt. Accomplishing this goal enabled us to live the life that we really wanted to. Now, when I say this, it may be a little bit less enticing than when some people say it, because I can't say, we paid off our debt and then we traveled the world. But I can say, we paid off our debt and we are now able to live off of one income and I am able to stay home with my kids. And that is the life that we were hoping to live. So to us, it definitely helped us accomplish this goal. Now we have often heard that we are lucky that we don't have any debt and not everybody can do this. But believe me, if we were able to do it off of the small amount of money we were making, anyone can do this. It does take a lot of hard work and dedication and effective goal setting to get it done. But I believe that anyone can do it if you are willing to put in the work. I do have a video about how we paid off our debt as quickly as possible, and I will put a link in the description and in the cards if you want to check that out. The second goal I set for myself that completely changed my life was decluttering. Now again, I don't have a super crazy hoarder to minimalist story like a lot of people do, but I do know that from the time I was a child, clutter had a massive impact on my stress. I talk a little bit more about how clutter affected me as a child in one of my other videos that I will put in the cards and in the description if you want to check that out. But even with knowing that clutter was not something I wanted to have in my home, it still continued to creep in, especially once we had a child. So when I decided to completely declutter my house, meaning that I was going to get the entire house done and not just stay in a constant state of decluttering, it made a huge impact on the amount of stress in my life. All of a sudden, my house felt very clean and peaceful, and I loved walking into my home. The next goal that I set for myself that completely changed my life was meal planning for the entire year. Now, I hated meal planning. I did not like to do it. I dreaded it every single week. And it wasn't until I decided one time that I was going to sit down and get all of my meal planning out of the way for one year that I actually kind of started liking it and it made my life so much easier. I no longer dreaded when my husband would call me on his way home from work and ask me what was for dinner because I always had an answer and I knew exactly what I would be making every night. It also made grocery shopping so much easier because I already knew the menu, so all I had to do was pull down the appropriate cookbooks, go through my pantry and my fridge, see what I needed, and I could easily make that grocery list and get the shopping done quickly. The next goal that I set for myself that completely changed my life was putting my home on autopilot. I decided that I didn't want to have to clean all the time and I didn't want to constantly have to think about what needed to be cleaned 
next. So I created routines for myself and for my entire family that made our house easy to manage. And the last goal that I set for myself that had a huge impact on my life was deciding to start a blog and a YouTube channel so that I could teach other moms how to simplify their lives. Now, if you're watching this and some of those goals that I mentioned there at the end sounded like things you would like to do in your family, check out the description down below because I have a lot of resources that can help you out. As always, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life. So be sure to subscribe down below and ring the bell next to it if you liked this video and would like to be notified when the next one comes out. Also, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps out the channel and it enables more people to see this content. I'll see you on the next one.